test, so that's fine. Um, my name is Bail the Stitcher, and welcome to my floss tube channel where I talk about cross stitch. Um, this is episode one where we awkwardly begin. Um, just as a slight background, um, I've been cross stitching on and off uh, maybe for the last 15, 20 years. Um, in 2015, I really hardcore got into it. Um, I'm always the type of person that has to be doing something with their hands. Like I'm just, I cannot just sit and watch a television show. I have to sit and actually do something. So I've always been into like crochet and knitting and cross stitch has just been one of those hobbies that like I've latched onto more than any other. And it is rare that I go a day without cross stitching. Um, there's just something about it. It's the productivity with it. It's the challenge. It's the mathematical side, uh, mirroring, marrying, marrying with like a creative side. Sorry. Um, I don't know. There's just something about it. I've just, I don't know. I just love it so much. Um, and in fact, um, in 2016, I started an online shop called Veil Stitchery where I designed my own cross stitch patterns and sold them, um, which was a lot of fun. Um, in fact, I started um, streaming my cross stitch on Twitch uh, at the end of 2017 uh, into 2018, uh, which was a lot of fun. I met so many cool people. Um, there's just something, I think that's one of the things like with YouTube and floss tube and like when people go to retreats to like meet others that share their same obsession with cross stitch. Um, Twitch also has its own little um, like aspect to it. Like you don't get 10,000 views on there or visitors or whatever. Like you are chatting with people, maybe a handful three to 10 to 15 to 20, if you're really successful, um, people like in real time and you just chat about stuff and everybody, you just know the people that are chatting with you are also cross stitching or whatever. Um, it's like a unique experience. Um, and it was amazing. Um, I met so many cool cross stitchers through Twitch and of course, Instagram. Um, unfortunately, in 2018 around April I just had some life things happen and I actually stopped cross stitching completely um, and you know I mentioned that I cross stitch nearly every day and if I go a day without cross stitching there's usually a problem um, and I ended up not cross stitching from about April 2018 to February of 2019 and it was just a lot of life stuff going on and it was not a good time um, Veil Stitchery is still kind of in hiatus. I, it's not open right now and I'm really not sure what I'm going to be doing with it. Um, I, I can't handle that sort of responsibility right now with the other things going on in my life and I just want to cross stitch again. Um, so I've given kind of given my, cause when you run your own business and you're designing your own items, like you feel the pressure to get those models stitched and you know, get them out there. And so I was always stitching my own stuff. And not only was I always stitching my own stuff, but I always had a laundry list of items that I needed to get to, to stitch. And so the idea of being able to stitch other people's designs just wasn't even, it wasn't even there. So um, this year, things have settled down a little bit and I really wanted to figure out like how can I get back into cross stitching and so I just sort of gave myself permission to stitch just whatever the hell I want so um, earlier this year I started my first heaven and earth designs project because um, you know go big or go home I guess um, and I have just been cr cultivating this huge huge wish list of designs and kits and patterns um, that I would love to cross stitch um, so here we are. Uh, I have so many plants. <laughs> um, and I just, I feel like myself again. I feel creative impulses again, which is awesome. Um, it's been like over a year since I felt that way. Um, so it's like almost, um, 
getting to know myself again. It's whatever, whatever, life stuff, shit happens, sorry, you know, whatever. So, um, just as a, you know, general background on my cross-stitching, uh, schedule is that, um, I, I work full-time and, um, I'm a single parent, so I work during the week, um, I work in project management at a state university. And so I stitch in the evenings, generally. Uh, I usually can get it about three hours if I'm lucky. And then um, on the weekends, besides errands and chores and whatnot, I just stitch all weekend now. Um, that I can get in a good 10 hours uh, or more <laughs> if I stay up late. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I can get in a lot of stitching now, um, now that I've kind of opened the floodgates and so I, yeah, have, I have lots of plans. I have lots of plans. Um, so yeah, I'm a single parent. Um, my kiddo is uh, just about to turn 14 and he just started high school. So that's a new adventure. Um, it's, it's been good so far. It's been good. I, you know, I, it's, it is what it is. It's just, it's like that next chapter. So now I have to like, you know, upgrade my, you know, my parenting level is now upgrading <laughs> to the next, to the next stage. So, uh, there's that. Um, but yeah. So being the very first episode of this floss tube channel, um, I did pull together a bunch of, um, finishes from around my home. Um, a lot of finishes actually are not available to show because they were gifts and they've been given. Um, of course, gifts being the easiest, you know, the most, uh, you know, they're the ones that get finished because they have deadlines. So we are not going into the graveyard uh, drawers of my whip pile. Uh, that is just depressing to think about. Uh, we will talk about current whips. So I have a bunch of finishes that'll show that maybe give you guys, you know, that probably will um, introduce myself more than anything else. And then uh, we'll go into the current whips that I'm working on and some haul that I received or acquired or purchased or you know the confession section um and then we'll i will talk about plans for the next week two weeks or so um i don't know if i'll be doing floss tube videos uh weekly or bi-weekly at this point um i don't know if i'll have enough to say every week i everybody says that um i ramble a lot so that's probably not true um but also i don't know based on my schedule, if I'll be able to record weekly. Um, my kiddo is with his dad every other weekend, and so every other weekend is a great time for me to be able to record. Um, so I don't know if I'll, you know, I don't know how it'll work, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, let's get into some finishes. Um, I'm going to start with like the oldest finishes I could find. So let's start there. Um, this is going to be interesting. So at one point I stitched a couple of ornaments and I don't remember if I found these online or if I designed them myself. Um, you have this cute little joy with little berry sprigs there. Um, and this little love. I'm a huge fan of fonts. I love cross-stitching lettering. <laughs> uh, super huge fan of lettering. Um, and then I have like two little snowflakes. Again, I can't remember if I stitched this from a pattern or if I did it myself. Um, I'm a huge, huge DIY, you know, do-it-yourselfer designer, whatever. Um, so I don't remember. This I did chart myself. This was one of the very first designs that I ever did myself. Um, I wanted it to be a little Victorian with that wallpaper in the back and I'm a huge cat lover so I had to have a cat with some glasses. <laughs> and then I don't know, whoop, books are a uniquely portable magic. So yeah, uh, this is one of the first 
patterns I ever charted designed myself. Um, and it used to be framed in a little 5x5 five five frame and I ended up stealing that frame for a gift I think and now I have no more square frames so he just kind of sits in a drawer. Um, and then here's another, I designed this around the same time as that one. Um, Mornings are for coffee and contemplation. It is a quote from the first season, first episode of Stranger Things. Um, I immediately designed this. I am a huge coffee addict. Um, what's actually funny is, so <laughs> I had this up in my bale stitchery shop. And of course I designed this like right when Stranger Things came out. I was obsessed. And I think it was last year, uh, Etsy, forced me to take it down due to trademark. So, of course, you know, when Stranger Things took off, they trademarked a bunch of stuff, so. You know, I don't know. You still see a bunch of stuff on Etsy with this saying, but I love this so much. Then, this is super old. This is like super old. This is like old, I think this is older than any of the things I've shown. But um, I saw this on a t-shirt and I was like, I have to stitch that. So <laughs> I, I stitched it. Um, unfortunately, this black Ada is of course awful. It was like a 14 count just from Michaels or whatever. And you can still see the hoop lines because this type of Ada just sucks really bad. But anyway, I love this. And uh, this is back when my son was young enough where he actually was interested in what I was doing cross stitch wise. And I made him this pizza one. <laughs> Sorry for the glare. Uh, I made him this pizza one to go with mine. Uh, Cause you know, but yeah, these aren't even really displayed anymore. I have, oh, I didn't grab the coffee one that's in my kitchen right now. Oh well, I'll show it, I'll show it next time. Um, so those are like the oldest finishes I have. Um, then I have, most of these items are actually normally on my bookcase of many things back there. Um, I made a keychain. I wanted to practice with plastic uh, canvas. And so I made a bunch of keychains, uh, which was cool, you know, back when I was doing smalls. I have a problem picking out smalls projects these days, but yeah, so there's a keychain. I gave that to my kiddo and of course he doesn't use it. So I have a little knickknack bowl that it sits in. Um, I also have this potion bottle that um, sits on my shelf. I charted that myself. And then... This is actually, this one is my most recent finish, um, which is kind of sad because I think I did this in March or February. Um, the back is not finished. I need to cut this down and um, I like to sew on felt to the backs of mine. So um, I just have been lazy and haven't. Um, this is actually a design by pattern art collection on Etsy and it actually comes with a second design that actually has two cat cactuses sitting in one pot. Um, I did this one because um, I it would get done faster um, and I it was charted I think for 14 count and I really wanted to practice I wanted to see how I liked stitching um, two over one on 28 count tent stitch because I was considering um, how I was going to start my heaven and earths project um, I know that if you do tent stitch of course you're doing half the stitches and an, a huge project like a heaven and earth designs project should be done in half the time right so i practice on here uh 28 count uh two strands over one and um i liked it on here uh unfortunately the fabric originally that i chose for the heaven and earth designs piece which will all show in my whips um the fabric i chose was awful I don't know what it was. It was some probably cheap thing I got at a local craft store, which is part of the problem. Um, but it just, it was, it was supposed to be an even weave and it was not even. Uh, it was actually, the stitches were longer than they were wide. So it was distorting the image. 
and I just I started feeling like claustrophobic and lost in the tiny little stitches so I ended up setting it down for a few months and picking it back up with a different fabric which I'll talk about in the whip section so but I love how this guy turned out he is in a little five inch hoop so he is adorable and he sits on my shelf and he makes me happy. Um, I chose this pattern to stitch because my kitty of 10 years uh, passed away uh, earlier this year and I wanted to stitch a cat design to commemorate her. Um, and it didn't need to be, I didn't want like a sad piece. I like did not actually want it to look like her. Um, I just, I wanted to stitch like a cat design. So. This was super fun to stitch. Um, I'll put a link to the shop below um, in case y'all are interested. Uh, this also sits on my bookshelf. This is one of those little notebooks that you can get. I think I got this from Joann's. Um, you can also get little notebooks. I think 123 Stitch online also has them. Um, but it's like the, the front cover is, pre, is like pre-perforated and um, I actually designed three like Dungeons and Dragons type uh, designs on these journals. Um, they were in my Etsy shop for a while. So this Roll for Sass one I ended up giving to my son who again at the time enjoyed getting something for me that I had personally stitched but now it doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> so it sits on my knickknack bookshelf because I still love it. I don't plan on ever actually using this but um, I love the design. It's just like a chevron with like uh, $37.99 and $310. And then I believe that's $4.98 red. So that's it's on my bookshelf. Um, and then I just have two others. Um, this was the last. This is actually one of the, my last finishes. And I finished this like April of 2018, sadly. Um, it says, don't worry, I have a plan uh, with a little heart up top because everybody does things with the best intentions usually. And then sometimes, you know, uh, the universe has other plans. So uh, this was the sentiment uh, I was feeling <laughs> in April of 2018. And, you know, I actually haven't had a plan since then. Um, so like I said, me getting any creative impulses at all uh, these days is actually just a breath of fresh air. So, um, so yeah, uh, this is some, some dungeons or RPG snark, I guess you could say. Uh, this pattern is not available anywhere. I, I designed this and charted it myself. Um, I don't know. If you are interested in stitching this, you know, let me know. I mean, we can work something out probably. This was my very first, uh, there we go. This was my very first uh, charted design that I made um, for Dungeons and Dragons that kind of um, helped my online store, Veil Stitchery, kind of hone in on a specific um, like brand of cross stitch. Um, and I started trying to convert a bunch of uh, tabletop, uh, role-playing game folks into cross-stitch because role-playing games require like a ton of creativity and people will you know create art based on characters and campaigns and, and stories I mean it's basically a storytelling uh, like vehicle basically and I love all things dealing with storytelling and I'm also a huge fantasy nerd so Dungeons and Dragons awesome unfortunately I have nobody to play with and whatever that's fine so anyway this was the first uh, charted design I did for Dungeons and Dragons and um, it's just a super cool easy sign I absolutely love sorry I love the um, the lettering again I am a huge word nerd so there's that um, the last three finishes I'm going to show are um, probably the my favorites and the ones I'm most proud of. Um, so this first one, <laughs> I decided to try um, cross-stitching on fabric with waist canvas. 
And <laughs> I don't want to say that a mistake was made, but it was it was okay when I was actually stitching on it. Um, sorry, I'm having a hard time orienting. Um, but I think I my technique was wrong and I did not take the opportunity ahead of time to watch videos of other people doing this, which was a mistake. Um, so I finished all the stitching on this and I went to remove the waist canvas, which I did live on Twitch, and I could not remove the threads. They would, they just kept breaking, they would not come out. And I, I don't know if I was um, piercing the waist canvas, the mesh, in the wrong way, um, because you have, uh, the weave has small squares and large square openings, and I may have been doing it incorrectly. Um, but like I charted this for my son um, from an image. This was one of his obsessive favorite video games. Uh, and so he picked out the sweatshirt and like the color and everything. And I charted this and I stitched it. It's got like 9,300 stitches in it or something like that. Um, like six or seven different shades of yellowy orange red. And um, it took me about a month and this was like his big Christmas gift, I think 20, 2017. Uh, and he wore it proudly for like a year before his interests changed. <laughs> and he, he, doesn't, he doesn't wear it anymore, which is fine. I've actually got to the point, sadly, where um, I've a I actually asked him recently, I was like, would you be interested in getting, you know, any other cross stitch finishes from me? Like, would you appreciate it as a gift? And he was like, to be honest, no. Um, he's like, I just, I don't like art, like stuff. He's like, he just doesn't care about having stuff up on the walls. Um, he's like, he's like, he just, he said that he just wouldn't appreciate it the way it would probably need to be appreciated because he understood like how long it takes me to do. And I was like, understood. I have so many uh, project plans that like, that just cuts out one you know, obligation, basically. Unfortunately, if you've been following me on Instagram, um, I'm at Veil the Stitcher with underscores um, on either side of the. Um, I had started a birthday present for him uh, based on Fallout, the video games, and um, I had done special uh, in lettering with like block, colored blocks around them, like very 50s-ish. And uh, that was like stage one of stage of three stages. And that took me a week. <laughs> I don't know how many stitches are in it. I think it was like 4,900 stitches. It took me a week and when, and I had, it's just on, it was on rotation. So it was like two or three weeks out. And when I asked him his opinion about receiving cross stitch and he was like, nah, I was like, okay, fine, fine. So that is, immediately UFO'd. I, I, I don't have anyone else in my life that I think would be interested in it, um, in me actually finishing it. So it's just, it's just gonna sit unfinished kind of in my graveyard whip drawer, uh, which is slowly turning into more whip drawers because I'm running out of room. So anyway, but I am like super proud of this. I loved the way the coloring came out. I felt like it was one of the first times that my gradient coloring chart charting wise, my skills have kind of like upgraded a little bit. So I was like super proud of that. Um, again, he does not wear that anymore. Um, then we have this pillow. Um, I charted this. Uh, this used to be for sale in my Veil Stitchery store. Um, I loved this. This was actually one of the first times that I successfully stitched over to on like an even weave and I thought it looked good. Like I, I was like sold on using even weave. Um, and this is actually also the first time that I ever finished anything into a pillow and so it's like <laughs> It's like really like lumpy and like it's like whatever and it's super plain fabric in the back If I could do this over again, I would have purchased like a yard of like super cool um, Halloween fabric to do on the back, but um, I hand stitched this pillow. I do not own a sewing machine so like it took me an entire Saturday to hand stitch the black onto the uh, even weave fabric and then I stitched this whole front panel on with the back panel um, I left a bottom corner open and stuffed it full of polyfill and then stitched it closed um, That is on the bottom 
so you can't really see it when it's sitting down. But um, I'm super proud of this. I love it. I love all Halloween designs. So this actually sits out all year round, which is why it's super dusty. But um, I love it. Okay, and the last finish, and then we'll move on to current whips. But the last finish I have to show you is an actual framed piece. Um, I designed this. Um, I Sometimes with my designs, I can actually do it in my cross-stitch software. I use PC Stitch. Um, I can actually think like a cross-stitch design, and I can design things that way. And then there are other things where I have to sketch them out uh, on, like, drawing paper, and then, or usually it works better for me if I can sketch them out on graph paper, because then I can kind of see what it would look like translated to pixels. But um, I love... For some, for some reason, I love, uh, like, the macabre type of designs that have, like, bones mixed with, like, flowers and stuff. I don't know. I just, I think I love the sentiment of, like, the life cycle. Like, there's birth, death, rebirth, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, and so this particular piece in Latin, it says mortem ne timueris, which as long as my Latin skills are up to par, are it means fear not death. And I utilized uh, the future perfect tense of uh, fear, as in um, like to make it a, a future statement of fact of like fear not death for it's like an aspect of life type of thing. And like, I have this out at all times. Uh, it's one of my display pieces. Let me see if I can do this properly. Um, it's one of my display pieces. I just like to remind myself, you know, um, don't get hung up on things. Um, all things change, all things are fluid, and that's just life, you know? So I love this piece. Um, I, it fits in like an 8x10. When I was designing, I was trying to keep things that could fit in an 8x10 frame or lower. Um, this piece, I ended up buying uh, a white matting and then I stained it with coffee. Uh, That's the first time I ever did that. Haven't done it since, but it was the first time I did that. Um, and I loved the way it turned out. I actually coffee stained this fabric as well. This is a, a just a 16 count Ada. Um, yeah, so it has a ton of backstitch, like everything was backstitched to give it more definition and whatnot, but I like love the bird skull and everything. So. so those are the last finishes I'm going to show and we are moving on to current whips. Uh, actually, one of my whips is a finish that needs two more finishes, but it's still a finish. Uh, not a fully finish, but um, so yeah, we'll do this one first. So today is Sunday morning and Friday night I decided that I needed to stitch a small. I needed to stitch a design that I could finish in a weekend. I needed to feel that cycle of the joyous rush of a start mixed with putting in the work, mixed with um, getting your finish. Like I just, I needed to feel that because a lot of the projects that I've been starting are at least month long projects, if not longer. And all of my, almost every single item on my wish list is also like a hundred stitch area or larger. A lot of the designs I keep picking are like 200, 200 stitch area. Like who, why? I just like torturing myself, I don't know. So anyway, so Friday night I, I went on Etsy because I was like, I need instant gratification. I need a, I need a digital PDF. I need something I can download right now, start tonight and finish this weekend. So I ended up finding from uh, Wild Violet Cross Stitch. Uh, she's super awesome. She is on uh, Instagram as well, um, at Wild Violet Cross Stitch. Um, but this is her, she has an Etsy shop. And I found these little uh, tarot cards. They are Stitcher tarot cards. And they are, you know, done in primitive style. And you have the snipper, the ripper, and the stitcher. And 
if you notice, the ripper is going in the opposite direction because when you rip, you know, when you have to rip stuff out, that means you're, you, you're, you have to redo your work. So I just, I love these guys so much and they are small enough where I knew I could do one tarot card this weekend and feel like I accomplished something. Now she sells them separately, like each, each one is separate, but she also has this pattern for all three that actually turns them into a notions and needle book, which I thought was super freaking cool. Um, in the future, I'm definitely gonna have to do that. I love the way that looks. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I did one. Now you can take a small in two different kind of ways, a small as in the stitch area is small, therefore you finish it faster. And you also have small as in stitching tiny little stitches. And I had it in my head where I want, I'm the type of person that when I look at a project, I will immediately know how I want to finish it. Um, and that kind of helps me um, like get to a finish is because I like, I, I do a project in order to finish it. I, I don't do a project in order to enjoy it in the middle. And what do, they, what do they call that? There's a process stitcher and a project stitcher. Project stitcher, I think, is like, you know, you do a project in order to finish it and, like, have it done. Uh, a process stitcher enjoys the process of actually stitching, and um, they're not as worried about trying to get things done on a deadline or whatever. They just work on different projects that just, they enjoy stitching. Um, I'm a project stitcher. I get really frustrated if I start something and don't finish it. Like I get really upset with myself. Um, so anyway, I stitched this little guy. He took me, I actually, uh, I don't know how many hours he took. I don't know. Um, let me get my head out of there. So this maybe focuses. Yeah. Um, I, this week, this weekend, I actually stopped counting stitches. I stopped uh, figuring out like how much work I was getting done because I, I just, I did not want to um, put that pressure on myself. But this guy, I worked on him. I got him about half done Friday night and I finished him on Saturday. Uh, and that's among doing other things. So look at this little back stitch down here. Like that is over one. That is one over one on 32 count. I don't know if you've done back stitch over one on 32 count, but it is a pain in the rear end. Um, so this is over one on 32 count. It's the smallest I've ever stitched. I have stitched over one full cross on 28 count before. I made it a Christmas ornament that I gave to my mom. Um, and it was about like four inches by two inches. But like my idea for these is that I wanted baby tarot cards that I would affix them onto firm like self stick backing and just have them on my knickknack shelf. That's what I wanted to do. So I made them super tiny, like look at my hand. Like here's my fingers. That's how small that is. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the skeleton guy himself is about the height of a bobbin. <laughs> so yeah, super, super tiny, but he is gonna look so good. I was actually going to fully finish him for this video today, but um, I stitched him right in the middle of this scrap fabric and I decided that I'm gonna stitch the other two first before cutting them all out and fully finishing all three. So I have a finish like I wanted, but of course I picked a project that has, you know, two other phases to it, which means it's, you know, I'm not going to fully finish it right now. <laughs> I have a problem. I cannot pick smalls. I don't know why. So that is a finish and a whip. Um, I don't know when I'll do the other two. It's not necessarily in my rotation, but I've been kind of throwing my rotation out the window. So. Um, the next whip I want to show you is um, Vintage Bouquet Number 4. This is by 2x2 um, two two Stitch Art on Etsy. Um, and that would be 2x2. Where is her? Does she even have it? No. No, she does not. I'll put a link to her shop below or their shop. Um, they have a lot of floral designs and I actually purchased um, three of them when I at the same, you know, like I bought this one and two others because I just couldn't decide. 
So this is actually going to be stitched into a pillow. Um, it has a deadline of beginning of October and um, I'm going to stitch it into a pillow and give it as a gift. Um, I have completed two out of six pages. And I love how this is coming out. This is um, 32 count Belfast. This is two over two. Um, two strands over two threads. And I absolutely love how this is coming out. Um, all of the patterns on the 2x2 Stitch Art website are all digital renderings. You do not see really how they're going to come out. And like it is just stitching up so so well oh you know what i'm not even hang on <laughs> this is right side up sorry about that um i love 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 the way this is coming out it is it is fun to stitch um except for perhaps maybe the green leaves there's just there's a lot of color changes and if I'm stitching page by page um, I don't like to have to count too far to get to stitches so I tend to color block as I go um, and the more I have to color change of course the longer it takes but um, we have one more page to the top and then three pages on the bottom and of course the middle bottom has the most stitching to it so this coming week, I'm going to be doing hopefully another page and a half on that. Um, I mean, we're still in August, so we have time. That's good. Um, so yeah, that one is super fun. I love the colors on it. It's just, it's amazing. Um, so I'll link to her shop, their shop below. They have a ton of choices. So the next whip I'm going to show is Glendon Place um, Castle Le Creep. And... I just had a super, super desire to stitch a <laughs> large Halloween design. Um, what's the, okay, yeah, the stitch count on this is 171 wide by 211 high because I don't know how to pick smalls. Um, I picked this one because I liked the color blocking in it. I thought it might be a nice change from my Heaven and Earth designs that I'm working. Um, I've done most of the top and I've only spent a week on it so far, but after that week, I sort of, compared to my other whips, just started feeling bored with it, sadly. Like, there are just other things I want to do, um, and I originally wanted to finish it, frame it, and have it displayed for Halloween this year, but I just don't know if it's gonna happen um I did all of this work in a week and it was you know I tended to do a weekly rotation these days and I just the flower the flower bouquet is just more fun to do and I am obsessed these days with my heaven and earth designs piece and I've just been really wanting to do some smalls to kind of get a finish feeling so I honestly don't know if I'm going to stitch on this more this year I, I don't know I, I'm definitely still planning on finishing it um, I just don't it, it all signs point to no for it being done this year okay my last whip to show you is uh, my heaven and earth designs project um, it is called ex machina by Chris Ortega the artwork is by Chris Ortega um, charted by Michelle, of course. Um, here you have this beautiful steampunk design. I started um, in the top left corner in that beautiful stained glass clock window. Um, I got the large format and I actually, <laughs> I meant to count how many pages go through the top because my goal is to get the top row finished We're just going to do it. Five, six, seven. Okay, so the top row has seven pages and a little bit. Sorry, you see this large format? It's like 71 pages thick. 
Um, so that top row has seven pages. And I am currently on page two. I am in the middle of the clock. Um, I told myself that I needed to finish the top row of pages before I could start another page. <laughs> um, when I show you haul, I will show you what I want to do. Um, so unfortunately it is in a Q-snap right now. Um, it is a beast to get in and out of the Q-snap. So um, when I finish this page, or if I need this, I only have the one Q-snap. Uh, it's an 11 by 11. Um, so the next time I take it out of the Q-snap, which is probably tonight, um, perhaps, I will post on Instagram a full page, uh, a full view. But right now, um, I'm working down, a I work down columns, I park, I do 10 by 10 uh, squares uh, individually and I go down by columns and I just always start from the top of the column and then work my way down and then I start from the top of the column and work my way down. Um, I don't do any feathering, I don't, um, you know, I don't do diagonal stitching or anything, uh, it's just what works for me. And also, if you'll notice, I have carried some threads to the, to the right over here. Um, and that is because I also hate little twosie, onesie and twosie stitches. So if I find in a 10 by 10 square that I only have one or two stitches for that color, I will look in the surrounding squares to see if it makes sense for me to carry it down or to carry it to the side. Um, because depending on how the, 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 the design is, that particular color may be to, to the side instead of down. Um, and so I try, if it's within 20 stitches on this fabric, um, I will carry it over. Uh, so this is 22 count Hardanger. Um, I actually wanted to stitch this on 18 count. <laughs> um, I wanted a huge ass poster. I, I wanted a huge tapestry uh, for my wall. Um, I've never stitched on 25 count and I was just like, you know, I can, I wanted, what, remember I said I had started this on different fabric and I was going to do it on 28 count, one over one tent stitch, or two over one tent stitch. Um, so when I restarted it, like when I finally, like I put it down for like months and when I was going to restart it, um, I wanted to immediately start it. So I didn't want to order fabric. I just needed to be able to find something in a local store. And so I found a piece, I could not find a piece of 18 count that was large enough. Um, yeah, I mean, we'd be going upwards of 30 plus inches, I think. So I found a piece of Hardanger um, that was large enough. This piece is going to end up being, I think, 25 inches by 28 inches, I think. Um, so I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm doing two over one full cross on 22 count and, um, yes, the stitches are puffy and yes, here, you can see my back. Uh, yes, it like, it can get kind of dense, um, but not overly so. Uh, I'm on page two and I have yet to break a needle. So that's pretty big for me. And I'm using a 20, a size 26. Uh, needle. Uh, in the past, I could only use size 24s and I just refused to use anything smaller, no matter the fabric, but I've slowly worked my way and now I use a size 26. So, so that's my whip. Those are my whips. Um, let's talk haul and then we'll talk plans for this coming week and the following week, perhaps. Um, so the first thing I want to show is um, I placed an order on 123stitch. Uh, in fact, that's where I got uh, Castle Lake Creep pattern by Glendon Place and oh, you know what? I didn't even talk about the fabric for that one. This fabric is, it's like, it's a picture of this plus haunted um, on 16 count. Um, it's a bit darker than that. Yeah, it's darker than that. Uh, this fabric has been a beast to get to photograph properly for Instagram. Um, it just doesn't want to pick it. It ends up looking gray, the fabric, uh, instead of blue. So whatever. I am not a photographer and technology and I do not get along very well. So, but anyway, that's that fabric. Um, so anyway, I placed an order on 123 Stitch and I got, you know, the Glendon Place 
uh, pattern and the fabric. Um, I chose to do all DMC. I wasn't going to do Sullivan's or any special stuff. Um, so during that purchase, I also had a plan. <laughs> For Christmas this year, um, I'm going to send a box Sorry for anyone listening who this would be a gift for. I mean, I cross stitch. I want to talk about my cross stitching. I do not do secret pieces. I'm sorry. I just don't do secret pieces. If you understand that, that there's a gift for you, you know, you can pretend to be surprised. But anyway, uh, for Christmas this year, I'm going to be sending a box of cross stitch ornaments to family back east. And I'm just going to let whoever wants an ornament take an ornament type of thing. I was super um, inspired by everybody doing the Jolly July and Christmas in July and Kissmas in July and um, all of the above. I did not do any Christmas stitching in July, but I bought a bunch of patterns. So we're going to try and do this with the glare so i apologize i have like 10 of these and i'm not taking them out um so we have little house needleworks we have this cute little pattern what is it it's from the sampler tree ornament series this one's just called merry christmas um so that's one we have little house needleworks all dolled up uh here and i just picked out like whatever i thought was cute focus. Um, we have Little House Needleworks Farmhouse Christmas Grandma's Quilt. I love this one. Um, I am going to be stitching this twice. I'm going to do it with basically the called fours, um, but with DMC. I do everything in DMC because uh, I have such a huge stash of DMC. And then um, I'm going to do it switching up the colorways. So I'm going to do it twice because I love that one. We have Farmhouse Christmas, Grandpa's Pickup by Little House Needleworks. Uh, I love this truck. I know everybody keeps talking about like it's like the year of the red truck, but I love this pattern so much because of that truck. Um, here's another car type thing. We have, uh, I have a two, I think, from Jack Frost Tree Farm that's coming out this, like all the different pieces that are coming out this year. This is Little House Needleworks. Um, this is the Douglas Fir one. Sorry for my shaking hand. I haven't eaten yet today. Ooh, sorry. I will eat after this. Uh, Douglas Fir. I love, I love the paneling on this car. Like I just, I can't, I got it for the car. Isn't that weird? Um, so I'm going to stitch that one. I may actually, well, I don't know. I don't know. I say I'll stitch things twice, then I get bored and don't want to. Um, I've seen this one stitched up a couple times, this hot cocoa one. This is also Jack Frost's Tree Farm. Um, I just thought it was super cute. And who doesn't like hot cocoa? And in fact, this actually reminds me of a Christmas trip. Like, I look at this and I think of one of my own Christmas traditions, which is um, for as long as I can remember, my son and I have watched... Um, the Polar Express every single year and of course when we first started watching it it was because it had a train in it and he was little and he loved trains but there's a scene in there with hot chocolate so I think of that when I see this so he's still not old enough where like he and I will still watch it this year even though he's 14 which yep um and then the last ornaments that I picked out were this Prairie Schooler St. Nicholas. Um, it's got all of them in it. And um, I actually think I'm probably only going to stitch three of these, not all of them. Um, I love this top one right here. I'm going to stitch that one for sure. Sorry for the glare. I'm not taking it out. Um, Where's the other one? Oh, and I like this bottom one with the cane, the walking stick, whatever. And then I'll probably, I'll pick another one. I kind of really like the one with all of the, the toys he's holding. Yeah, so those are all the Christmas ornaments. I'm hoping to stitch 10 to 12 um, and send them out. So... And you know what's awesome about this? These are smalls. These are smalls. 
Um, I have to do 10 to 12 smalls, but they're still smalls. So uh, in October, once my pillow has been shipped out and I have decided or not to finish my Castle Lake Creep, I will be starting these um, because I have to finish all of them as well, like fully finish them. Um, my original thought was to do pillows, but now I'm kind of thinking that if I do all pillows, I might be bored with that. So I might do some pillows and then um, some flat finishes. We'll see. I'm planning on <laughs> not winging it and watching some videos to kind of get my inspiration flowing and see what happens. So that is actually part of my plans starting October. I will be, you know, doing a crap ton of ornaments. Um, okay, more haul. Uh, I was watching Lisa's Stitching and Such, uh, another floss tube, uh, channel that I love and if you watch her like on time sometimes when she talks about her haul she'll mention sales that she's taken advantage of which is ugh, so bad because I was watching a video of hers I, this was near the end of July and she had purchased I believe a new heaven and earth designs uh, chart and she mentioned that she purchased it because uh, they were doing one of their 50% off sales. I immediately paused her video, went on Heaven and Earth Designs, and made a purchase. Um, with the best intentions. Uh, I had a certain chart that, I wanted, that I've wanted for months. Like, it was actually... Um, I didn't see it at the time I picked out Ex Machina, but like it was pretty soon after that that I was like, I want that. Um, so I went on, I, I went on there just to get this one chart. And the other thing is, is I have decided ever since I started Ex Machina that I will never, never, well I shouldn't say never because you never know, but um, I most likely will not ever pick out a full size Heaven and Earth Designs chart ever again because there are so many things I want to stitch. And again, I'm a project stitcher. I want to finish everything. I do not stitch on them just for the fun, just for the fun of it. What fun would that be? Um, so ever since then, I was like, I will probably always do minis or story keeps or whatever, just so that I can enjoy the artwork and also actually finish it and get it on my wall. Um, so anyway, I went online to buy this one. This is called Come on. This is called Hubble Bubble Square. So it's a perfect square. Um, I love, first of all, I love, ma I love magic. I love fantasy. I love cats. And I love the distribution of color in this design. This is uh, artwork by Lisa Parker. And the moment I saw it, I think it was February or March in uh, Heaven and Earth Designs Instagram feed as like a new release. I like screenshotted it to remember it for later. So during the sale, <laughs> I went there for this. Uh, it's a 250 by 250 stitch area. Um, 86 colors, of course. But then I saw this. Also, Lisa Parker, we have mini absinthe. And again, the distribution of color, this looks beautiful. And one of the things to note when you're working a Heaven and Earth Designs is how much kind of like negative space is there? Like how much background are you actually going to stitch? Because that can get super boring um, to have a bunch of like blank, you know, background to like do a bunch of confetti stitches that all blend into the same color anyway uh, that can get really old so like you look at the distribution of color and the design on this and I would enjoy stitching every square of this so I got that because it was 50% off and then he just kept going and I got this story keep oops um they did not have a mini of this uh, they just had the full size and then they had this story keep. But what I loved about this was in this little, uh, you know, crystal ball, you have this witch flying on a broom. And 
I was like, cat, beautiful teal color, uh, tree branches, and this amazing, you know, witch picture in there. This is called um, Story Keep Rise of, Rise of the Witches. I was like, I, ha I have to have it. So this one is uh, 150 wide by 400 high. Um, so I got that. And then one more. So I got four. I got a total of four Lisa Parker artwork. And then I saw this and I was like, you know what? I just, I have to have this as well. Are you going to focus? There we go. This is called Watchmen, mini Watchmen. And what I loved about this is the atmosphere of this piece. Um, this reminds me of like any RPG ever. And I just, I would love to have this on my wall. Um, again, if you look at it, I mean, you've got steps to stitch, you've got crows to stitch, you've got um, stonework to stitch, tree branches to stitch. So I, I don't see this being boring at all. Like I don't see any pages of this that would that you have to slog through to get to the good stuff. So those were my four Heaven and Earth designs that are all over like 200 stitch areas. Um, so like I said, with my Ex Machina piece, I need, I t gave myself the um, restriction that I, I have to get through the top row of pages on Ex Machina, which is seven pages and a bit uh, in order to start another one. So I have these four. However, um, there are two other artists uh, on Heaven and Earth Designs that I have like four different, like four different pieces of art that I would love to stitch. Um, I, I don't recall about them. I don't I haven't purchased any of them, so I'm not going to show them here. But again, in my mind, like I just want to stitch all of these huge projects that I I just don't have time for. So. Yeah, um, okay, so just one last little bit of haul for this time is that um, I stopped at Hobby Lobby to pick up some threads that I just, they were constantly out at Joann's and Michael's. Um, DMC 169, like I cannot find that like anywhere. So I stopped at Hobby Lobby and found it. So I took like two to three skeins because seriously. Um, and they had DMC Diamant there. Nope. Which is, which is um, metallic thread, but not Lightworks. <laughs> Lightworks is worst. I hate Lightworks. Uh, Lightworks is like still six ply. You pull off a strand, but it frays and breaks so easily. It's just awful. Um, and so I saw this, and these are single strands. Um, and they say that a single strand of this uh, should equal like two strands of like a cotton, th you know, their, co their normal cotton. So on um, Castle Lake Creep, the um, lightning up here and then also further down there's some, co there, there's another color in here that's supposed to be metallic. So this lightning is supposed to be like Krynic metallic. I don't have Krynic, I would have to order it. I, I really try to stitch from stash when I can. <laughs> so I had, like with the best intentions, purchased some DMC Lightworks like a while ago. And I had this like super light gold. So I was like, I'm just gonna stitch with this. It was the very first stitches I put into this piece. And um, picture this plus fabric kind of is a little floppy and the, holes had shrunk a little bit with the dyeing process I'm sure and I folded super short strands in half and like did the loop start and I was stitching it with two strands and first of all that was my first mistake I should have used one strand um secondly it was just I I'm actually surprised I didn't stop working oh my god where where am I I'm surprised I did not stop working on this project just because of that um so I, I got through it. The stitches are the messiest stitches I have ever stitched in my life and they look awful. Um, and then I saw the silver, which you're, it's actually like a light gold. It's not quite silver. It's, where is it? I don't know. No, it is silver. I think I got the silver one, not the light gold. Um, so I'm 
majorly contemplating uh, ripping out the lightning and redoing it, but on the other hand, I'm not super in love with this piece anyway, and do I really want to go through the effort of ripping out all those stitches and restitching it? I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I'm going to. But, oh, I guess this is haul two. I picked this up just like everybody else. I won't do a flip through, um, <laughs> but I will show you um, I, me trying to do smalls. Um, I do, of course, I pick the one like almost full coverage piece. I would love to stitch this. Um, that is Tunnel of Trees by Kim Leo. Um, I want to stitch that. Um, let me find the piece that I'm actually, okay. This is Welcome to Our Haunted Home by Linda Medina of Medina Originals. Um, again, lettering. I love lettering. I love this lettering. I actually want to use this lettering to make other things, but, um, I would stitch this just, this is actually one of the things that I would stitch just to stitch it. Process stitcher. Very rare. Um, so anyway, when I saw this metallic thread and I saw an orange one, I saw an orange one. Um, it's actually copper, but it works because it's almost like a burnt sienna. And I think it would work for this haunted, the haunted word. So I would love to do that. Um, yeah, so I won't show anything else in that magazine. I feel like there've been tons of flip throughs already. Um, and then I got a red one because Christmas. I'll probably use this in some of the ornaments. Um, <laughs> and I'll let you know how, I don't know if you guys have used this stuff before, the diamond, 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 DMC stuff. Um, I'm hoping that it works smoother than most metallic thread that I have used in the past. Um, I'll let you know how it works for me. Um, so that's haul. Uh, plans. Uh, so I'm still obsessed with this. I'm obsessed with this. Um, where you see the black here, that is the uh, end of the page. Um, I'm definitely planning on doing for the, if there's 400 stitches to get down to here, I'm definitely doing that today. I probably, there's a, there's a couple uh, color blocks up here, so I could probably get to the halfway point. Um, and I, I'll probably work on this a little bit this week after today. Um, but my main focus for this week is again going to be, um, vintage, fold this. the vintage bouquet. Um, the more I get done on this, the less stressed out I'll be about getting it done on time. Um, I'm a little stressed out about doing the pillow because again, I'll be hand stitching it and I'm sure it'll be fine. Once I start doing it and I get my plans and I pick out fabric, like it'll be fine. Um, I definitely want to do more than I did with the Halloween pillow. Like I want to do some edging around it. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to watch some videos and get some ideas. I'm not winging it for this. I want this to look amazing. So I'll be focusing on that this week. Um, I may allow myself to start something new. Um, I have some haul coming this week. Um, I bought about five different pieces of fabric from 123 Stitch on Thursday night. Um, one piece is, I mean, I'll show it in my next video, but one piece is actually for the Christmas ornaments, which was my original purpose for going there. And then four other pieces of fabric found their way into my cart. Um, but I have two pieces of fabric coming um, on smaller swatches of fabric so that I can kind of see if I actually want to use them for projects. Um, next year, I definitely plan on starting a long dog sampler. I'm torn between uh, Templar, Templar Prophecy, I think it's called, or The Pilgrim. I, I want to stitch both. I think they would make a, like, a pair. But um, I'm torn between the two, but I have two different ideas of fabric. And so I want to get some smaller swatches and see if I actually want to do a huge project on them. But that means that the smaller swatches of fabric, I actually have ideas for smaller projects that I would like to do to, to test it on them. So, I mean, not my own stuff, like other people's stuff, but yeah. 
so yeah, so that's what we're going to focus on this week. Um, you know, again, there might be a surprise. I just, I want to do, you know, whatever I can to just enjoy myself with stitching. So no stress, no mess, just do it. Um, I meant to do this in the beginning and totally forgot, but it's the first episode, so that's fine. Um, I, I think every episode I'm probably going to mention a couple of floss tubes episode a, a couple of floss tube episodes that I've watched very recently um just to kind of keep that going and do a little shout outs but because I watch floss tube every day um I am constantly trying to like discover new I mean there are plenty out there that I'm not finding in the algorithm so far but I keep finding you know hints of them on Instagram and then I'll you know then I'll immediately go to YouTube and find them or vice versa um so in the last two days, I've watched, I just want to shout out real quick, um, two newer floss tubers. Um, I, they both have two episodes out as far as I know. Um, one is called the, for, the Forensic Flosser. Um, and of course, all of these floss tubers, I'll link to them below. But um, Forensic Flosser, she has two episodes out and it turns out I already follow her on Instagram. <laughs> I think on Instagram, she's like Miss Nomer crafts or something like that um if you type in miss gnomer and no and it's gnome as in like a garden gnome you'll find her super easy but anyway so she has two episodes out and so i watched her and then i also discovered um there's a floss tuber called crafty peacock and i may have found her on instagram first as well and then found like she started you she started a floss tube um she also has two episodes out crafty peacock um so i'll link to them below so definitely go out support new floss tubers of course um and then i wanted to shout out two of my favorites um i love um kim hollenbach's videos she stitches some larger pieces and when i watch her talk about um her progress on them it just kind of like gives me inspiration to work on my larger pieces as well so um i enjoy seeing the progress on her pieces so i'll link link to her below and then i've mentioned her earlier in this episode but um lisa's stitching and such she is one of my absolute favorites i love watching her videos i love all the pieces she works on um she's just She's just a joy to watch. I can't say you know enough about that. So, those are four four floss tubers. If you haven't heard of some of them, you know, go check them out. Um, you know, I'm I'm usually behind on the times in everything. So, a lot of things that I might shout out is going to be old news to everybody else. So, anyways, anyways, oh my God, has it really? How long has it been? It's been. I've been recording for over an hour. That's insane. Uh, that's insane. I thought I would be lucky to get 20 minutes in. I'm a rambler. That's so bad. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. So we will finish that up. Okay, we're finishing it. Anyways, thank you so much if you've managed to get to the hour mark on this video. Um, the next time it won't be like this because I won't be showing a bunch of old old finishes or anything. Um, and I hope in the future I will not have a huge haul. However, I already know that I have two shipments coming from two different sellers um, of haul. So I think it will be the confession section and not haul acquisitions because I should not be purchasing these things. I, I have I have stash. I should be stitching from stash. So anyways, Thank you for watching my very first floss tube episode. Again, I am Veil the Stitcher. You can find me on Instagram. I do tend to post once a day. It kind of just helps me feel productive in my daily stitching. Um, it's at Veil the Stitcher with an underscore on either side of the. Um, you can find links to most of the things I've talked about if I can remember to do this down below the video. And um, I will have another video coming to you either next week or the week after. So. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have amazing stitchy adventures until our next time. And uh, I wish you the best, very, very best. So thank you.